Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to try some TikTok art challenges. Over on TikTok, I've been seeing some art challenges. I wanted to try some of them for myself because they seem really fun. The first type of challenge I wanted to try was where you create a character based on certain criteria. The one I decided to try is the draw your fairy challenge. Mostly because I really wanted to draw a fairy. <laughs> so here's my little tiny design to kind of get an idea of what I need to do. So the skin color needs to be the same color as my shirt. The shirt I was wearing that day was a dark muted green. This isn't the prettiest color, so I was a bit nervous. I could have gone and changed my shirt, but I felt like that would have been cheating. The eye color needs to be my favorite color. My favorite colors are pastel pink, teal, and purple, but I most often lean towards teal, so I went with that. The hair color should be the color of my favorite flower. I think my favorite flowers are gardenias. They smell so nice and are really pretty. If I own a car, my fairy gets large wings. If my hair is long, I should give my fairy accessories. I'm not sure if my hair is long. I consider it kind of medium length. Uh, so I'm not going to give my character accessories. If I have siblings, my fairy gets a wand. And I have a lot of siblings, so this fairy gets a wand. I don't have a pet, so my fairy doesn't get details in the skin. But I may have ended up adding details. Okay, so let's draw my fairy. So I'm going to start by drawing a simple fairy pose. I wanted the character to look kind of floaty. It's a pretty basic pose. I wasn't sure if I wanted my fairy to be a boy or a girl. I ended up going with a girl, mostly because if I end up making this an OC, I have more boys than girls at the moment, so I feel like I should make another girl. Also, I decided to draw in my chibi elf style. I keep their proportions more simple, and they have kind of larger heads. Plus, then this fairy would fit in with my other fairy-like characters, Priya and Carson. Priya and Carson don't have wings, but maybe there are people that do have wings in their world. So this character's color scheme is a dark green, light teal, and white. And this combination of colors gave me a kind of mysterious vibe. So I wanted to make my fairy wear a cloak. I started to draw it, but then I was like, wait, how would that work with the wings? Then after thinking about it some more, I thought maybe the cloak could have a slit in the back for the wings to pop out of. So I went with that idea. We can't see the slit, uh, but it's there. <laughs> Since her hair color is based off of a gardenia, I thought I could make her wear a dress that looks like it's made from gardenia petals. I recently found a person on Twitter that makes little fairy dresses and they are so cute. I love them so much. I used one of their dress designs as a reference. I recommend checking out their stuff because it's super cute. For the hairstyle, I decided to go with a middle parted bob. I don't really have a reason for choosing this style, I just thought it kind of fit the look I was going for. Okay, so now that I have the details laid out, I'll clean things up a bit. So like I said, I feel like this character has a mysterious kind of vibe. So maybe she's not super expressive and it's kind of hard to tell what she's thinking. Her face always looks kind of blank. I was trying to think of how creatures like this would fit into Pariah's world if I were to add characters with wings. The character also has a wand. So maybe they would use magic in some kind of way. The people like Pariah and Carson only have the power to grow specific kinds of plants. Like Carson grows Spanish moss. Or at least that's what he grows at the moment. <laughs> I think the winged creatures wouldn't grow plants. But I'm not sure what their role would be in the world. I'm still doing a lot of the world building for their story. At first when I got this color scheme, I was not a fan. Especially because of the dark muted green. But to my surprise, I actually quite like it. I never would have picked this skin color, but I feel like it works nicely with the white hair and blue eyes. I feel like I would want to give all of the winged characters fantasy skin tones. It would help them be even more different from Pariah and Carson. Oh, also, I wasn't supposed to add details to the skin. The criteria was that you need to have a pet if you want to do this. But I really wanted to give her light colored freckles because I thought it seemed cute. I'm not sure if that means I failed the challenge. Uh, but yeah, I feel like the challenge is supposed to help you get started. So I think it's okay to add extra stuff if you want to. Since you kind of get more ideas as you go. Uh, so yeah. Also, what should I name this character? I'm kind of wondering if I should name her. I don't need more OCs. I have so many already. In my head, I kind of just think of her as Gardenia but that might be kind of basic. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you have any name ideas, let me know. 
Also, if you enjoy my content, it would help a lot if you click the subscribe and turn all notifications on. I don't really do the whole subscriber spiel in my videos really, uh, but my channel hasn't been performing very well recently. It's like the algorithm all of a sudden decided to not like my channel. Uh, so yeah, if you could hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications and maybe give this video a thumbs up, that would be really helpful. Uh, but anyways, here's my fairy for the Draw Your Fairy Challenge. This was a lot of fun and I feel like this challenge made me draw a design that I usually wanted to have come up with. I recommend doing it, it's really fun. Now we'll move on to the next challenge. But before we do, it's time for a mini tablet review. Today's tablet was sent to me by Sense Lab. And I want to start by saying it's super fancy and feels really high end. This tablet features a seamless design and a gently curved palm rest. I've never seen a tablet like this one, and I've seen a lot of tablets. <laughs> the tablet has three express keys and adjustable LED lights that help define the work area, which I think is very neat. Next in the box, we have this carrying pouch to help keep your tablet safe on the go. The lining inside is so soft. It'll definitely keep your tablet nice and cozy. Now we have the pen case. Inside, I was expecting to see one pen, but there were two and they are different from each other. We have the white pen that features three express keys and the slim pen that has two express keys. The end of each pen has an eraser function, which many pens don't have nowadays, so I think this is really nice. I also love that Sense Labs includes the slim pen with the tablet. Most companies sell slim pens separately, so I really like that it's included. You may have noticed this USB and adapter. Well, this tablet can actually be used wirelessly, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But first I want to show you the really neat Sense Labs Quick Keys. This little device is the ultimate customization for Express Keys. The Quick Keys OLED display and physical dial allow you to create up to 40 shortcuts per application. Okay, so back to the tablet. So what does it feel like to draw on? And honestly, this is the best screenless tablet I have ever used. It is so responsive and accurate. The work area has just the right amount of texture to it and it feels very natural. I also really like how the tablet curves, so it's more comfortable for your wrist. Also, I was using the tablet and the quick keys wirelessly, and they were super easy to set up. I just had to plug in the USB receiver, turn on the devices, and they were ready to go. Also, there was no lag at all. Right when I would draw on the tablet, everything I was doing would instantly happen on screen, and my experience overall was fantastic. If you're looking for a high quality tablet, I definitely recommend you check out Sense Lab. I give this tablet and the Sense Labs Quick Keys 5 stars. I really enjoyed using them. Okay, so that's all for this mini review. Now let's get back to the video. I'm not sure what this challenge is called, but I kept seeing people draw characters and on one side they would be in one style and on the other they would be in a different style. Often one would be the normal style and the other style would be more realistic. Uh, so I'm going to give it a try too. So I'm starting off by sketching out the head as a whole. I did this because I thought this would help me keep the proportions of both sides a bit similar. I want them to kind of line up so it doesn't look super weird. Also, I'm drawing Kageyama from Haikyuu. I was trying to think of a character to draw for this challenge and Kageyama popped up into my head. So I went with it. <laughs> So for the style on the left, I'll be drawing in my style. I feel like I kind of went even simpler for this drawing. Maybe something close to my webcomic drawing style. I don't know, things just felt even more simplified than they usually are. Also, I'm going to be keeping these drawings as sketches and I'm not going to fully color them, but I did add a little bit of color just to make things interesting. Uh, but yeah, I didn't want to spend like a ton of time on these uh, because they're just half faces and it's just for fun. We're going to kind of speed through the side with my style because it's just me drawing half a face in my style. I don't have much to say about it really, um, but drawing the other side was pretty different and a little bit more interesting. So like I said, people often draw a more realistic version on the other side. I'm not going to be going for realism because realism is very hard. I've tried it a few different times and it was not easy. I'm going with a kind of semi-realistic style, if you can even call it that. It's still pretty stylized. <laughs> the part that changes the most in this case is the eye. I try to add more details that we see in real life, like the tear duct, the lower lid, the iris will be more round in shape and also smaller. I do often draw in a more semi-realistic style in my sketchbook if I'm using references. 
The tricky part about this is I wasn't using any references and I probably should have. Honestly, I don't really like how this turned out. I feel like I made Kageyama look weird, but it was a bit of a challenge. So the challenge did its job, I guess. <laughs> Overall, I still kept the shading pretty simple, but I did add more to this side, especially around the eyes. You also get more of an indication of a lower lid and the brow ridge. I also shaded things a little bit differently. Like I tried to make the lips more of a lip shape compared to just kind of flat like I usually do. For the hair, I decided to go with a more detailed look. So instead of just using flat color, I drew in a bunch of lines to shade in the hair. This gives a more hair-like look. When doing this, I really try to keep in mind how the hair is flowing. And I also make the lines all flow in the same way. For the iris, I added little line details within it. I also made the highlights a lot smaller and kind of boxy in shape, like they're coming from a window. One thing that's interesting about drawing in a different style is I feel like it makes you think more because for my style, I just kind of do what comes naturally and what I'm used to doing. So I kind of just go with the motion. But then when trying to do something different, I feel like I was thinking about things a lot more. <laughs> so let's see how this turned out. Here is my style. Here's the other style. And here they are together. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kagiyama. This was an interesting experiment. I feel like I could have done better, uh, but it was fun to try. I thought this next challenge looked like a lot of fun. So basically you pick an OC and then you draw them in different ways. You draw them normal, gender bent, as a child, as royalty, and as a villain. The ones that intrigued me the most was royalty and as a villain. So I was really excited to draw those ones. And when trying to pick an OC that I would want to draw in those ways, I decided on Annabelle. She's a character from my webcomic, My Next Door Neighbors. She is best friends with the main character, Doris. I'll talk about why I picked Annabelle for this challenge in a little bit. So right now I'm drawing how she usually looks. I thought about skipping this one and just showing you a picture of her because I draw her very often. But I decided to do a quick sketch of her because I wanted to actually do the challenge and not cheat. If you don't read my webcomic, Annabelle is fairly confident. She is honest and hardworking. She cares a lot for her mom and her friends. However, Annabelle can be a bit intimidating at times, especially if you get on her bad side. <laughs> the kind of clothes that she wears often have collars, kind of like a school preppy kind of look, I guess. I don't know. I don't know much about fashion. She does often wear shirts with collars and skirts. So here's how Annabelle usually looks. So next I need to draw Annabelle gender bent. And that basically just means drawing her as the opposite gender. This is actually something many of you have requested over the years, but I just never seem to get around to doing it. So you may notice that I'm drawing over the first drawing I made. I did this because I thought it would help speed things up a bit. I kind of have a base. But I'm just drawing the boy features over it. So for my boy characters, I draw the eyes much smaller or not as tall. It makes them have a more mature look. To keep Annabelle's look, I do still draw the similar eye shape. It kind of goes up and then slopes downwards. I often describe it as the shy looking eye, but Annabelle's not shy. <laughs> I also make the jawline a little longer and less round. I also defined the bridge of the nose more, and in this case, I drew thicker eyebrows. For the hairstyle, the first one that came to my mind was an undercut for some reason. It just felt right, I guess. So the lower part is all really short, but I kept the top kind of fluffy, and also drew the bangs in a similar way to Annabelle's current hairstyle. I was a bit worried about this design looking like Zeke. He's one of the other characters from my webcomic. He has blondish short hair and glasses, so they have similarities, but I feel like in the end it looks fairly different. So here's what I think Annabelle would look like if she was a boy. I think it turned out kind of cool. It's fun seeing her design in a different way. Next is Annabelle as a kid. This is another one that I almost skipped doing because I've drawn Annabelle as a kid for my webcomic. But then I remembered that chapter is super old <laughs> and how I draw little kids has changed quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, I ended up drawing her as a kid. When drawing little kids, I try to keep things very round and soft. The necks are smaller. I don't define the nose very much and I make the eyebrows kind of small and thin. 
When you look at little kids, their eyebrows are often not as noticeable as teenagers or adult eyebrows. I also make the eye placement be lower on the face. This gives it a younger look. And of course I make the eyes pretty big. For the hair, I did have to go back and look at what hairstyle I drew in my webcomic. It's very similar to Annabelle's hair now, but the bangs are cut straight across. I imagine Annabelle's always kind of had short hair. Like I mentioned at the start, I was more interested in the royalty and villain part of this challenge. So I kept these first three as just simple headshots. I didn't really bother to draw different clothes or poses. However, I will be doing that for these next two. Uh, but here is Annabelle as a little kid. Look at my little baby. <laughs> So now I'm drawing Annabelle as if she was a royal or a princess. The trickiest part was deciding on what kind of dress I think she would wear. To find ideas, I was looking at ball gowns and wedding dresses on Pinterest. As I started to think about it more, I felt like Annabelle would wear simple but elegant dresses. So I tried to find something like that and then came across this dress. And I used this picture as my reference. I felt like the pose also fit what I was going for. Annabelle is 15 in my webcomic, but for this drawing I decided to draw her looking a bit older, maybe around 18 or so. Also, I imagine if Annabelle was royal, she would have her hair grown out, so that could be styled in things like buns and different updos. Annabelle likes her hair short because it's easier to take care of and more practical, but if she was royal, I think the stylist might make her wear it long. <laughs> I feel like if Annabelle was a princess, she would take the role very seriously. Like she would read up on a ton of things like politics and all the different things so that she could be a good ruler and she would want to take care of her people. I feel like Annabelle would make for a good queen. <laughs> I had so much fun drawing this picture. The pose was fun and I really liked drawing the dress and the button details. Oh, also the crown was fun. It's all stuff I don't draw very often. Plus it's neat seeing Annabelle in a different way. Also, just to be extra, I brought this into a new canvas, added a design to the background, and applied some shading to make things feel more dramatic. So here is Royal Princess Annabelle. <laughs> Lastly, we have Villain Annabelle. I imagine if there was an alternate universe where Annabelle was a villain, she would be one of those powerful CEO type of villains. Like the ones with a lot of money that hire people to do their bidding. So for the pose, I wanted it to feel kind of powerful and confident. So I decided to have her place her arms out and they'll be resting on a windowsill. With the way her arms are placed, it makes her torso have a bit of a bend to it, which makes it a bit more interesting to look at. I feel like if Annabelle was a villain, she wouldn't be like a totally evil villain. Like she would have something that she wants to accomplish that maybe in her eyes doesn't seem evil, but maybe it kinda is. Cause I don't know if Annabelle could truly just be like a villain. <laughs> but if this is an alternate universe, then maybe she could. <laughs> so I mentioned earlier that I would tell you why I chose Annabelle as the character for this challenge. And I chose her because she was originally going to be the villain of my webcomic. I've mentioned this in past videos, uh, but yeah, I ended up making her not be the villain. So because she was going to be the antagonist of the story, she was the first character I thought of when deciding who to draw as a villain for this challenge. Which I'm really glad I ended up not making her the villain. I really love Annabelle and I don't want her to be the bad guy. <laughs> Honestly, this was super fun to draw. I enjoyed this a lot. It's kind of funny because this picture is kind of out of the realm of what I usually draw, but it was super duper fun. I enjoyed I just got so scared. My laptop wasn't plugged into its charger, so my laptop ran out of battery and turned off and I was so scared that I lost all the audio I just recorded, but thankfully it saved it all. So yay, I don't have to re-record that. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, back to what I was saying, this challenge was a lot of fun because I got to draw something kind of different from what I usually do. I really liked drawing the facial expression and the confident pose. Plus it was fun drawing Annabelle in this kind of way. Also, like for the princess picture, I'm also drawing her older in this one. Instead of 15, maybe she's in her early 20s. I figured if she's a CEO, she would need to be a bit older. <laughs> for the background, I was going to make it be dark and nighttime to kind of give a creepy feel. But I actually felt like Annabelle felt more powerful and menacing when I had the background be blank. So I decided to have the windows be white, like there's a very powerful light coming in. And this makes Annabelle be in shadow. 
which makes her feel kind of ominous, I think. So here are all my drawings of Annabelle. We have normal, gender bent, child, royal, and villain. Let me know which one is your favorite. I really enjoy drawing the royal and villain one. And here's the other art for the first two challenges. If you have any TikTok or art challenges that you want to see me do, let me know down in the comments. Before we end, I want to thank my amazing, beautiful patrons for supporting my work. It means so much to me. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!